Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at some examples and try to get this into our brains a little bit more familiar. Not an easy thing to do. Left-handed players were more accurate than right-handed players. So in this case, we have the hyphen. And again, this idea here. So right-handed, this is one idea, this, this group of players and we can go ahead and hyphenate it. So that saves us some trouble. All right, here's another example. Error producing. The program simulated the error producing decisions of novices. So this error producing is one idea, one group, and that influences this decisions. So we can hyphenate it. Temporal groupings were more effective than spatial groupings. Temporal groupings were more efficient than spatial groupings. And here we have the hyphen missing here and the hyphen missing here. And we're not going to be using the hyphen here because it would be, the hyphen should be two words here, then modify this grouping or two words here modify this grouping. So this is not going to be hyphenated. And in fact, you can see temporal and spatial. These are two different groups. So we need to keep the names clear. Temporal group and spatial group. So no hyphen. A largely ignored illusion is now receiving attention from researchers. And here you can see the hyphen added here. But this is wrong. Because actually, a good point here is, why would you say largely ignored? What does that mean, largely? When you could just say an ignored illusion is now receiving attention. So I think this is an important point in that not only is this not really modifying ignored very well, so it doesn't really go together, a largely ignored illusion, you should really make your research writing clear, and that is don't say things that are hedging. That is a little bit maybe, a little bit yes, a little bit no, I'm not really sure. Just say it's ignored, or it's not ignored, or it's well known, rather than largely ignored. Blood pressure readings were taken before and after e each relaxation session. And here we have the hyphens inserted here. But actually, we should not have hyphens here because the blood pressure readings were taken before and after. So this idea here is not really a group or a single thing that modifies this each here. So it would not use hyphens. The volunteers devoted time each day to skills relevant to job seeking. And remember here what we're doing is we're actually looking for a job, right? So it's job seeking as in a verb. We're going to do something relevant to job seeking. So there's no reason to have a hyphen here because it's not really going to be modifying anything after it. It doesn't need to be a single word. The neighborhood selected contains single and double family dwellings. And here we have this special case of double family. So this does seem to be good for a hyphen because we're saying dwellings are this kind, double family. There's also another kind of dwelling called the single family. However, we could put family here, use a hyphen and then write single family and double hyphen family, but to save space, we just write single with the hyphen here, and then double with the hyphen here, but then family we only include once here, but the idea is this family also belongs here. So it's single and double family, but you must remember to put the hyphen in there. So dwellings have the two types, double family and single family, so that is correct. The experimental design allowed us to assess the effect of the pretest on performance. So here is this idea of the pretest. 
Now, why would this be a hyphen? Because again, are you sure it's modifying something here? Is it one type of something here? No, it's not. Plus, if we check the dictionary or check other published papers in our journal, we're gonna see that this is a single word, not a compound word. Like it can be used, it's compound, but it can be used as one word. It's a compound word that can be written. An indirect measure of attitude or memory presents fewer opportunities for subjective bias than does self-report. So a self-report is a type of report. Now we don't have anything here to modify, do we? But that's just because we've stuck it at the end of the sentence. It is one kind. It is one kind. So an indirect measure of attitude or memory presents fewer opportunities for subjective bias than does self-report. There are other kinds of reports, aren't there? There is an indirect measure of attitude or memory. There's all kinds of ways to measure this. This is one way to measure it. Research supports one conclusion, and we have a colon here, cockroaches will avoid or escape bright light. So we need to very simply say, oh look, here's a colon. So it looks like something's going on here. Do we have an independent, and do we have an independent on both sides? Research supports one conclusion. So we have a subject, we have a verb, that looks like it could be a sentence. Cockroaches will avoid or escape bright light. So yeah, that's really clear too. So we have two sentences there. We've put two sentences together. What can we do? Remember, we could add a comma and a conjunction. But what we've done here, we've added a colon, no space before, one space after, and then the C in cockroaches must be capital C. And why do we do that again? We do that for that unusual case where we're taking a sentence and a sentence and jamming them right together because they're really related, really close, and I want to have the idea very smooth. That's quite okay, but don't do it a lot. If every couple sentences you're doing this, jamming sentences together, the reader becomes very confused. It's for a very special case where these two ideas really go together, and I want to prove to you, boom, that they go together. I'm trying to show in my research they're very close together.